Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking through a tougher kinematics problem. So if you are in a physics or an AP physics class and you need to know how to do a problem where there is a change, there is a transition from the first half of the problem to the second half of the problem, then this is what we're going to be going over. And what I mean by that would be an example where someone is cruising along and they hit the brakes. Or if you have a problem where there's a rocket that's accelerating upwards and then it runs out of propellant or something like that. There is a change, a transition from the first part of the problem to the second part of the problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do a problem like this. So this is about a driver that spots Rudolph at 80 meters ahead of her and she's just cruising along at a constant velocity. So what we're going to do is just start by writing down what we know. I'm going to add more information to this as it becomes available, but for now I can go ahead and just write down that that is going to be our stopping distance. We're going to assume that it takes 80 meters for her to eventually come to a stop. And it says she travels for a while, not seeing him, at 20.1 meters per second. All right, well, that is a constant velocity, right? So we could say, let's call that a V average. During that time is going to be equal to 20.1 meters per second. She's not speeding up. She's not slowing down. So it's a constant velocity. And while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and write down the average velocity equation here. So that's going to be delta x over delta t. Or sometimes it's just written as t. It's understood that t initial is zero. So sometimes it's written as v average is equal to delta x over t like this. All right, so that's another equation that we can work with. And let's continue with the problem. So we want to just read and stop when we get to something that we can write down and translate into physics variables. So it says, she then spots him slamming on her brakes. This is your transition right here. This is really important for this problem. And so I'm going to label this transition from part one to part two. And what that means is that you have information from the first part of the problem and you have information from the second part of the problem. Usually in these problems, they relate somehow, they interact with each other, but that is really crucial for understanding what's going on is that there's a first part and a second part. So my advice is start to look for those transition words or sentences that give you a clue that there is some change and then there's a before and an after created. All right. So it says her car can slide to a stop with an acceleration of minus 3.75. That means we're going to have a second part over here. Our acceleration for the second part is equal to minus 3.75 meters per second squared. And when in doubt, look at the units. If you're not quite sure if you're dealing with a speed or a velocity or a time or whatever it is, look at the units. They're there to help you to understand what you're dealing with. Meters per second squared is clearly going to be a set of units that's used to describe acceleration. The question says, how long can she travel or how long can her reaction time be before she ruins Christmas, before she hits Rudolph? So what we're actually asking is what is her time for the first part? That's going to be our unknown. And I need to go back here and label a couple other things. This is our initial average velocity. And this is our total distance that we can talk about is 80. And we're just updating because now we realize that this is a two-part problem. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, that's delta x1 plus delta x2 over here is equal to our total distance traveled of 80 meters. All right. So if we think about what we know for part one, if we talk about part one, what do we know? Well, we know what our V average is. And we can even think about that equation. Once again, we can write it down, delta x over time or delta time. We don't know what our time is for one or our delta x is for one. So that's an unknown and that's an unknown. We do know this, but because we have two unknowns in this equation at this point, we can't really do much. So let's go ahead and move on to two and think about what we know and what we don't know or what we're ignoring. So we know our acceleration for two is minus 3.75 meters per second squared. And we know our final velocity for two is going to be zero because we're going to assume it comes to a stop. Now, what I'm going to write down next is actually true for both of these, but not for either one of them individually. So I'm going to say delta x total is equal to delta x1 plus delta x2. So we know this is 80 meters right here, but we don't know what delta x1 is or delta x2 is, so we can't really use that information yet. Let's think about what else we know. What about our v initial for part two? What is our v initial for part two? 
All right, and here is a really key insight for understanding how to do problems like this. I want you to imagine for a moment that we were gonna draw a very simple graph of velocity with respect to time. So velocity, let's say in meters per seconds, with respect to time over here. I could shorten the graph and make it a little bit smaller, but you get the idea. So for the first half of this, so I could label this as part one, Part two, this is a strategy that's actually really helpful because many times your velocity versus time graph, if you just draw a sketch, it makes things clear as to what's going on. We assume that she does come to a stop, let's say, and what I want to do is emphasize this. I'm going to use a different color here. I'm going to say this is my V average for part one, right? This is also V initial for part two. V average for part one is equal to our V initial for part two. That's crucial to be able to do this problem and hopefully that makes sense. So what we can say is my V initial for two, therefore is gonna be 20.1 meters per second. So we do know a few things. We do know three things about equation two. So let's go ahead and think about what we don't know what we don't know, and I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write this up here. What we don't know is we don't know delta x for 2, and we don't know our delta time for 2. Neither one of these we actually know, and that's okay. We eventually want to get to the entire time, but to get that, we actually also want to use this information right here, right? So we actually want to get to our time initial over here. We want to get to this delta t for our final answer, right? This is going to be our final answer, so we want to get to that, but I do want to point out that we still need to use this information here. So let's solve for delta x for 2. It would make sense that we would solve for delta x for 2 so that we could use that equation right there. So I'm going to take a look at these four equations, 1, 2, 3, and 4 over here, your four kinematic equations that you can work with. And I want you to think, all right, we don't have time at this point and we're solving for delta x. So we want to solve for delta x for 2, but we're ignoring time. So which of those four equations is ignoring time? Well, I hope you can see that the third equation is ignoring time. That means we're not even going to be considering time using the third equation. So I can use that. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out. I'll label it as three over here. And we're going to say our V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two acceleration. And I'll label this as part two for delta X two over here. This is V initial for two, V final for two. All right, what is zero here? What do you think is zero? That's an appropriate thing to do for all of these problems is to shorten them, make them easier. Well, this is zero right here and we wanna solve for delta X for two. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract my V initial for two, square that and divide by two times A2 is equal to delta x. I skipped one step there algebraically, but you're probably okay at this stage of the year. So I'm gonna go ahead and write in my numbers. Remember, you're gonna square this first and then make that negative. So that's gonna be a 20.1 meters per second squared, and then the negative of that divided by two times a negative 3.75 meters per second squared, and that's gonna be equal to our delta x for two. And I'm starting to run out of room, so I'm gonna write down I've got 53.8 meters. All right, well, great, because we can take that and relate it to that equation that I have boxed over here. And so I'm gonna say, well, remember, delta x total is equal to delta x for one plus delta x for two. Well, I now know what this is, and I know what this is. I don't know this, so I can go ahead and solve for it. I'm gonna say delta x for one is gonna be equal to 80.0 meters minus 53.8 meters over here. And so I end up with delta x for one being equal to 26.2 meters. All right, very good. Now, if we think about, I'll use a different color here. If we think about what we know, we're looking for that delta T1 business. That's what we want. How long can she not pay attention to Rudolph? Well, remember, even easier than using one of these kinematics equations is using one of these equations over here. And we know how fast she's traveling. We now know what our distance is. We don't know our time, so we're gonna solve for time. To do that, bring your time up here, multiply by delta T. Multiply by delta t over here. This cancels. You're left with time times v average is equal to delta x. So our time is equal to delta x divided by v average 
and I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Our time for one, this is all for one, is the time that she can take to not pay attention before she has to react. And that is going to be 26.2 meters divided by 20.1 meters per second is equal to 1.30 seconds. So that is actually how long she can wait before she has to hit the brakes to be able to slam on the brakes and not ruin Christmas. So I hope this makes sense and I hope this helps you to understand how to do it. I will say this is a little different style screencast than I've done in the past where I am actually just writing this out. And so hopefully you can read my writing and understand what I'm saying. This is exactly how I would solve a problem and how I ask my students to solve a problem. I'm just trying to help you with one of the more difficult types of problems that you can see in a kinematics unit. So if you have any comments down below, let me know and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.